uh, particularly as it relates to our summit today. And for the HVAC readers meeting this week, look, this time of year, about a year and a day ago, we met in Bali on the sidelines of the G20. Since then, key members of our teams have had important discussions on issues that matter to both our nations and to the world. But as always, there is no substitute to face-to-face -face discussions. I've always found our discussions straightforward and frank, and I've always appreciated it. Mr. President, we know we've said it for a long time. We have to ensure that competition does not bring the conflict. We also have to manage the responsibility. So I also believe that the world wants to change. We also have a responsibility to our people and the work that we do all the work together when we see it not only and a critical global challenge we face from climate change to counter narcotics, artificial intelligence, and our joint efforts. I look forward to this discussion. think of your trip to China when I was the vice president of China. We had a meeting. It was 12 years ago. I still remember our interactions very vividly. And it always gives me a lot of thoughts. Last time we met in Bali, you said it was a year and a day ago. A lot has happened since then. The world has emerged from the COVID pandemic, but is still under its tremendous impacts. The global economy is recovering, but its momentum remains sluggish. Industrial and supply chains are still under the threat of interruption, and protectionism is rising. All these are grave problems. The China-US relationship, which is the most important bilateral relationship in the world, should be perceived and envisioned in a broad context of the, of the accelerating global transformations and theme in a century. It should be developed in a way that benefits our two peoples and fulfills our responsibility for human progress. Never been smooth sailing over the past 50 years or more, and it always faces consequences for both sides. I'm still of the view that major country competition is not the prevailing trend of current times and cannot solve the problems facing China and the United States or the world at large. Planet Earth is big enough for the two countries to succeed and one country's success is an opportunity for the other. It is an objective fact that China and the United States are different in history, culture, social system, and development path. However, as long as they respect each other, coexist in peace, and pursue win-win cooperation, they will be fully capable of rising above differences and find the right way for the two major countries to get along with each other. If in a promising future of the bilateral relationship, in-depth exchange of views and reach new, reach new understandings with you on strategic and overarching issues critical to the direction of China-US relations and on major issues affecting world peace and development. Thank you for your thoughtful arrangements for our meeting today and for our participation at the APEC meeting. Thank you. 